Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Warrior 3. In the last part we got to Egg and Bear, and now we can't actually enter the place because yokels aren't welcome here. And he will get in your way no matter where you go. So what you actually have to do is, you might remember at the end of the last part, I got myself an invisibility herb. Use it! And somehow it turns all four of us invisible even though we only used one. Uh, these things I think are only really- I think invisibility herbs are only used here if I recall off the top of my head at least. And as you can see, they're just a temporary invisibility effect. Anyway, Egg and Bear Castle, which is actually based off, I think, something in Scotland, is home to this little puzzle. If you might recall back in Reeve, we had to push a boulder around to help out one NPC, even though it wasn't even necessary to do that. Here's the first required time you have to do stuff like that. You have to get all three of these boulders onto all three of these tiles. It's actually a fairly easy puzzle, but it could stump someone on the first time through. Could. I do wish this would go a bit faster though, but eh, I played slower NES games. Much, much slower. Ugh. You know, I should think about it, that's kind of odd. The NES for being seen as like the first really, 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 really successful uh, video game platform, at least after the, the 2600 or so, has a lot of bad games on it, more so than a lot of other consoles have to their name, in terms of ratio of good to bad, at least. They get a lot of legendary series started here, so that's why I guess it's so beloved. Anyway, if we investigate this chest, we get the Vase of Drow, which you might remember some people have been mentioning that we need to get the final key. So we can now go get the final key, but first I want to do a bit more exploring around, uh, talking to some people for some hints of where to go next. First off, we want to head to the southwest and talk to a kid that's down here. There you are, you little scamp. I know about that. The final key's in a shrine somewhere. Well, that is incredibly unspecific. Next up, we want to talk to the green guy right there, actually. Also, I think I mentioned it before, but if I look like I'm walking into a wall for no reason, that's likely because I'm not paying attention to the screen. I'm looking at my notes, more likely than not. It is said that long ago, a shrine sunk into the ocean that there are now shoals where that place was. Hmm, a shrine where the final key might be. Shoals. Keep that in mind for later. Call it a hunch. I'm winking, even though you can't see that, huh? Hello there, Counselor. Chancellor. In the far western seas is a new continent where a tribe of Indians called the Sioux lives. So obviously that's based off the Sioux Native American tribe. Which means the area where they are is more or less North America. Also, I don't even know why I saved here. I don't really need to. Anyway, here's the thing, you can actually walk on the roof, and, uh, going down the stairs, I'm gonna go down in a moment, it'll actually lead you to a blue guy, who'll tell you about the three boulder pushing puzzle we did a bit earlier. But, since I don't need to talk to him, I'm just gonna use that opportunity to cut back out, with one minor change in my party. You might notice Tifa's nowhere to be seen, and we have Hora now. This is Horus the Merchant. He's level one, not because I didn't train him, but because I just added him to the party. He's now a permanent addition, I only need him for one small thing coming up, and for this entire section, by the way, run away from every battle you can. You don't want... Well, more like, I don't want everyone's experience to get unequal. Because then, tracking levels is pretty easy. Horus is just here temporarily, and I, even then, I think I only run into one random battle. Yeah, that one right there. And then there's this place. Welcome to a place that technically doesn't have a name yet, but it's Newton. Newtown, rather. It's essentially New York City. Hey there, old guy. I think I'll build a town here. Once the town is built, it'll be a good thing for everyone, but I'll need some merchants. What do you say, Horace? Will you accept the job? Sure. Really? A horse will give up the journey and settle down in this town? Is that really what you want? Yeah. Oh, I'm grateful. From this day forward, Horace and I shall start to build a town together. Well, I'm going to stay here. I'll send the things I've been carrying to the vaulted Eliahan. I don't know why I turned him to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, doesn't it? Yeah, but if you actually have a merchant in your party, like a main party member, I'd recommend actually going to get a level 1 merchant for this anyway, because it doesn't matter what merchant uh, level the merchant is at, rather. And here we are back with Tifa in a party, and as you see, there's actually already a shop over here. 
not a very good one. All they sell is a medical herb and a leather helmet, but hey, it means the town's starting to flourish. Starting to. Uh, you are required to do that at some point, by the way, so I just recommend doing it now when you can. It's right in the way. Anyway, next up we want to board the ship and sail south around the continent. Also, if that's New York, where the hell is Massachusetts supposed to be? Mind you, I'm only saying that because I am, in fact, a Massachusetts resident, but still. Either way, we want to head into the river here, which I'm assuming to be the Mississippi. We want to head north, west, west, north, north, and north one last time. And that's the town of Sioux right there. That's where the quote-unquote Indians live. They're actually, I think, supposed to be Native Americans, but yeah. Also, you're going to notice it cuts to daytime here. That's because I actually rested at the inn here off screen so I could have it be daytime. Let's talk to this guy. Was there a town directly east of here in a small field by a shore? Yep. Oh, that's great. Apparently, the guy who founded Newtown is from here. Let's talk to this lady. They say the echoing flute's in a tower somewhere. Yep, the echoing flute's back from the first, from second game, rather. And if you search underneath the well, you get a Staff of Thunder. That is a really good item, especially on the Pilgrim. Uh, it's also pretty good on the Wizard. Essentially, I uh, use it as an item that casts Firebane, which is really good against things in the water. I'm Ed, the Talking Horse. If you find the base of Drought, use it in the shoals of the Western Ocean. That guy just pretty much told us outright, uh, blatantly, what the two guys back in Eggenburg, Egg Eggenburg, what, whatever, I forget the name of the town already. Eggenbear. Uh, told us in much more cryptic ways. Either way, now I'm actually back in Newtown because it's easier to sail to my next destination from here. And immediately get into a new battle against a King Squid. King Squids have 135 HP, 474 experience points, 84 gold, and can drop an acorn of life. Uh, they are actually surprisingly powerful, especially if you run to more than two of them. However, they are very susceptible to sleep, so use that against them. Anyway, here's a bit of an interesting thing. Uh, I, I, think, I forget to use it here, I believe, but the Staff of Thunder, you can obviously use it as an item, as I mentioned, to cast Firebane. However, unlike most items that have a use effect, it can be used by any class. A lot of items that have use effects that cast spells can only be used by their respective classes. By the way, for a bit more in specific, Firebane cast, uh, hits every enemy in one group for around 35 points of damage. By the way, that building right there is the Arctic Shrine. That is a very important building. In fact, I'm going to be cutting to it later on, so keep this location in mind. Anyway, let's head up to here. If I recall, this is supposed to be Antarctica or the North... I forget. It's somewhere. Maybe it's Canada. Either way, it doesn't look like it, but I actually am walking upwards because there is a house here that is very out of the way. Just head north enough, and there we go. It's been many years since I've met another person. Let me see, when was the last time? It was when the pirates came and left that strange bone. Well, never mind. By the way, do you know anything about the staff change? No. With that staff, you can change your shape into anything you hear, like. I hear that the king of Samaneo has it. It's been many years since I've met another person. Let me see. Yes. Really, is that true? Well, that's what I want. Ha, ha, ha. Well, we're probably going to need to give that to him, then. Anyway, now we want to head south a bit. And then once we reach, as you can see, there's a big chain of islands here. You want to get west of the big one right here. Uh, you could pro you'll probably be safe uh, at the little entrance there, that little enclave that I was just north of me. Actually, yeah, you will. Because here are some so shoals. And a new enemy, tentacles. Tentacles has 200 HP, gives 1,707 experience. 120 gold and can drop a fighting suit. And if I recall, they are, first off, I think, still very vulnerable to sleep. But they attack twice per turn, should memory be right. Yep. Enemies that attack twice per turn are actually pretty annoying in this game just due to the low H relatively low HP count you have. And hey, Tifa leveled up. Nice. See, by level 21 in Final Fantasy VII, I'd have... A good amount of her limit breaks, actually. 
Because then again, as some people know, I'm that guy that'll grind for Cloud Zombies, um, Meteor Rain rather, by the time Sector 7 collapses. Huh. This totally is a reuse from the Undersea Volcano in Dragon Warrior 2. But yeah, we got a shrine. This is the one that people in the Egg and Bear were talking about. Hence why we use the base of Drown. And in it, we get the fabled final key, meaning we can now open any type of door, meaning you can now put not only the magic key, but also the base of drought over in the vault at Aeliahan, because you'll never need to use either of these items again. Hey, dude. There's a great pit called Giaga deep in the mountains of Necrogond. All misfortunes emanate from that pit. Hmm. That's foreshadowing for something, I have a feeling. Either way, now we're actually gonna cut back to the Arctic Shrine. Let's actually enter this place and see what it's got for us. This is similar to... Uh, what was the name of the place in Dragon Warrior 2? I forget. Either way, the, the big warp areas you can exit and enter. This place essentially serves as your shortcut to all around the world. Warps that lead in several different directions. By the way, in case you need an inn, there's one to the left of me. Just use the final key on that little inlet there. And here we find ourselves, uh, selves, at a church. Let's see where we are now. Well, this doesn't look familiar at all. Uh, I will actually warn you, unless you're doing level grinding, try and stay away from any random encounters you can here, so stay on the grasslands. Uh, because you're technically not supposed to be here for a bit mo uh, longer, but I wanted to come here anyway so I can get this place on my, uh, return list. Welcome to Samanao. Or Samanao. Something. Uh, first off, you can buy some magic armors here, which I recommend you do for the hero around now. Also, this funeral march is only here the first time you come into town, I believe. This guy was put to death for only bad-mouthing the king. That's not traditional at all. Huh. Keep that in mind for later. It might become important. Either way, I'm actually pretty much done here now. I only came here to really see that cutscene and... Uh... Get it on my list for, for return. Which is why now, we're back at Tadanki. Or Tedanki. Whatever. You might recall there was a skeleton here who apparently had one of those six orbs for us. Now that we have the final key, we can talk to him. Just use the final key. And we can talk to the guy. I have waited long for this day to come. Here, take this orb. And we get the green orb. I really wish they showed a little item get screen, but oh well. Let's talk to him again. Place the orb on the altar of Liam Land in the distant south. That's gonna be useful advice eventually. But for now, we're actually gonna head back to Dama. Because you might remember how I mentioned the Sage class earlier on, how we can't exactly turn into it unless we are a goof off. Well, there is a way to turn into it otherwise. It involves coming here to the Tower of Garuna, which immediately has our next new enemy, Great Beaks. 43 HP, 234 XP, 36 gold, can drop an intelligence seed. I think they're susceptible to some stupid spell, sleep, and they can attack twice per turn. And so if you run into three or more, that can be troublesome. Anyway, uh, what we're essentially here for is, someone hints to it, I think in either Dama or Maharata somewhere, that there is a book you need to turn to a sage for the most part, unless you're the goof off, obviously. We're here for that book, because I'm just going to say it's, it's, it's in here. <laughs> I forget how you're supposed to come to that conclusion, unless you just do some exploration, really. But I'm here to do it now. And since everyone's pretty much fresh over level 20, it's the best time to do it. But since I'm not going to have enough time to talk about the class later on, I'll talk about sages right now. Sage class is essentially a combination of wizard and pilgrim. It has the wizard's high MP and IQ, but the strength and defense of a pilgrim. Plus, they can cast every spell in the game, including something closer to them. They can also equip a few high-level pieces of equipment and armor that the sage, or that the pilgrim cannot. But for the most part, the best way to summarize them is that the pilgrims, the no offensive magic. The only real disadvantage is that they require a lot more experience to level up, often one and a half times as much as other classes. And, that, well, and their stats are actually kind of hard to talk about because, as I mentioned, because you class change into them, 
That means you can have any variety of stats depending on who you class change into it. Uh, you could have a fairly high attack stat uh, if you're a soldier with at a high enough level. But I'm gonna turn guess who into one. If you guessed Lowell, you're right. So let's explore the Tower of Garuna and hopefully find a thing. If you want to progress on, head east, but I want to head north in order to get some items, or an item, more accurately. I think there's actually a treasure chest I'm missing here somewhere, but I think it's pretty worthless. And gold's still pretty useful. You know, I... It's odd. This is actually a sound I like, but don't like at the same time. Because it's such a little earworm, it gets stuck in my head at the randomest times. But because of it, it's so catchy. Actually, I think right there is the treasure chest I miss. Huh. I'm not actually sure what's in it. It's probably nothing too worth it, but oh well. Either uh, way, let's head over these tight ropes. Yeah, there's actual tight ropes in the game. Uh, don't press up or down. Well, you might be able to on this one, but it depends on the one because you can lose some severe progress doing that. Anyway, we want to head up here and get this. This contains an iron helmet, which I'm going to give to my pilgrim. Why? Because I, it's, uh, well, first off, you could have bought one by now, but this is a free one, so might as well. And because of that, the golden crown is now out of use. That's right, I've had that thing since part two, and we're only now getting rid of it. Uh, off screen, I'm actually gonna return to Romilly and give that to the king, uh, so I can free up that inventory space, because you can't sell it. Anyway, fall down the rope there, fall down this hole, and go down those stairs. Doing so, knits you up at this chest, which contains... The Book of Satori. This is what you need to change into a sage. And I was going to cast Return to get back to Dama, but you actually need to cast Outside, then Return. So I just fall into Dama. So let's go do our class change. Uh, you have to actually give the book to Satori to remember you want a class change. And if you don't want a sage, you can just put the store of the book away. But honestly, you want a sage because they are really good. This is the Shrine of Dalmor, where people come to change professions. Do you wish to do so? Yes. Which profession do you wish to change? Lowell. Which profession does Lowell want to choose? Sage. Lowell wants to be a sage? Yes. Are you prepared to begin your training again for level one? Yes. Well then, this ought to put some spark into you. hey -ya! And Lowell now is a sage. First off, when you actually class change someone, you actually have to re-equip them uh, with stuff from their inventory, if, if you have something they can equip first off. And, as you can see, Lowell's back at level 1, which means I need to do some grinding. In fact, in between parts, I'm going to be grinding him up to level 17, uh, near Samaneo. That took around maybe 2-3 hours, nothing too bad. But also, if you noticed, while he has his spells still, his stats are halved. As I mentioned earlier, that's what happens when you class change. You keep your spells, but your stats get cut in half. And now we're back at Baharada, because my next location that I want to head to is not too far away from here. Anyway, yeah, you're going to want a Sage no matter what, because they are extremely useful due to the fact that they, don't, they can only heal for shit. They can attack for shit, too. Anyway, you're going to want to head east around the continent, because our next location is the lovely continent we saw earlier in the game, Japang. Or er, Japan, really. There it is right there. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 7, we'll be exploring Japan and seeing what we can do here. See you guys then!